and now I'm ready to do the batch render. So I'm going to go to the rendering menu set. Rendering menu set. And in the render menu, I've got batch render. I'm going to go into the options for the batch render. And make sure if you have a switch that says use all available processors, you should probably turn that on because your rendering is going to be much faster. Now when I click either one of these two buttons, batch render or batch render and close, Maya is going to go execute the render job. But in fact, Maya is going to launch another program that's running in the background that's going to do the rendering. So Maya itself is not going to do the rendering. And we won't see much feedback that anything is happening. There is no window that comes up to show you what's happening. So some programs will display rendered frames as they're created, but Maya does not. All you get is a percentage of rendering done down here in the command response area. If you open up the script editor, you can see more information. So that's this button on the extreme lower right hand corner of the Maya interface, the script editor. So if I open that up, we're just getting more detailed information about what's going on. I'll scroll over here and it's showing me that we're only on frame three. And that's because we've got a bump map and we've got ray trace shadows. So this 48 frame sequence is going to take a few minutes to render. So I'm going to pause the video and we'll pick it back up when the rendering is complete. Okay, our render has completed and let's take a look at it. I'm going to close the script editor and I'm going to use the file menu to view an image sequence. And this launches a program called FCheck. It's just a little helper application that comes with Maya. View sequence. And I might have to navigate to find my files, but I know that Maya saves into the current project images. So go in there and there are all the individual numbered frames. And I'm going to click on the first one and choose open. F check launches and the images are loaded in one at a time. So the first time it goes through, it's going to be very slow, but then it's going to pick up speed because it's loaded all the images into memory. There we go. So you're seeing those 48 frames played back at exactly 24 frames a second. I can left mouse click and drag to scrub through my animation and that looks pretty good. The important thing about this is it's playing back from memory or RAM. So it's actually loading all those images into system memory. So that means that you'll have a limit to how long your sequence can be. Okay, so I'm gonna quit out of FCheck. I'm gonna save my scene and I'm gonna quit out of Maya because in fact, if I wanna make a movie that I can send to someone or post on my webpage, I can't do that with Maya. So since Maya can't create a movie file directly, I'm going to use a helper program to convert the still image sequence into a compressed movie. I'm going to make a folder for that in my current project. So it's perfectly okay for me to create a custom folder inside here. We'll call it movies. And I'm going to use QuickTime Pro to create the movie. Now you could use other programs like Final Cut Pro or Premiere, but I'm just going to use QuickTime Pro because it's quick and easy for me right now. So I've got my QuickTime player open and I'll choose File, Open Image Sequence. I'll need to navigate to my current project and find in the Images folder, select the first frame, just like in FCheck. And I'll also need to change the frame rate to 24 frames a second in this case. And when I click Open, QuickTime loads each frame individually, just as FCheck did, and we can play it through from memory. All right, so now I'm going to export, file, export, not save because save doesn't actually do what you think it does. So we need to do export because we're actually converting to a different file type completely. So file export. 
I'm going to navigate to that movies folder that I just made. And that's going to be my save folder. Here's the name. And then we're going to export movie to QuickTime movie. But we're going to do some fancy settings in the options to get really good quality. So I'll click on options. And this is what I want to see here. Compression H.264, which is a very high quality compressor. Dimensions current. Okay, so I'm going to go into the settings. Compression type is going to be H.264. Frame rate, we want to leave that alone, so we'll make that current. Data rate, we want to have automatic. If we had it set to restrict, then it would uh, degrade the quality in order to achieve a certain bit rate on the internet. So if you're doing streaming video, you might need to worry about this, but we don't have to worry about it. We'll just leave it at automatic. We'll turn the quality up to best. And in fact, if we want to get the extra super best quality, we can set the keyframes value to all. And we click OK. And we click OK again. And let's give this a proper name here. We'll call this one bounce.move. When we click save, the export process begins and it just takes a few seconds for this short sequence. So now what we're seeing here in the window is the pre-compressed version. So we're going to need to go to our project folder, movies. Okay, so I'll just double click on that to launch QuickTime once again and admire the work. We can turn on looping. And there you go. That is our first animation in Maya. Modeled, animated, lit and rendered, and finally compressed out to a movie that we could watch on our hard drive or share with our friends. So I hope that you've enjoyed this series of tutorials on the Maya bouncing ball. And stay tuned for more at digitalartsguild.com.